Hello fun people, I'm Isaac Carlson and today we're going to break down, analyze, and theorize on the entirety of the Riot and the Last Dragon official trailer. And through articles, summaries, and the Disney website, seriously, we have learned so much in the last day about this new animated adventure. The trailer opens by panning over a port town. Here in this gorgeous city, Raya states that she's on the search for something with her team. By the way, we see everyone in the markets around Raya wearing purple and green. This shows us that Raya has ventured beyond her home. According to the Disney website and a fantastic article by IndieWire, which goes into more detail about the story and the characters, all of the different segments of people who wore different colors in the initial teaser trailer are a part of five lands that formed across the kingdom of Kumandra, who when brought together, form the shape of a dragon. Later on in this official trailer, we are shown images of each of these lands, but I think it's really important to go through now instead of waiting because knowing how Kumandra is set up helps set the stage for everything else that happens. So there's the Heartland, Raya's home, which is filled with magic because of the crystal known as the Dragon Gem that contains the last source of dragon power and is denoted by aqua and blue colors. Fang, which is a thriving land surrounded by water, which is represented by white and yellow colors. Spine, which is a remote land marked by xenophobia and has dark green colors associated with its people. Ugh. Talon, which is a cross roads and a bustling marketplace and is marked by purple colors, and Tail, which is a remote desert that is becoming more isolated as water recedes and is represented by yellow colors. Knowing all of this, we can tell that at the beginning of the trailer, Raya is in the Talon land, and while she's there, she asserts that she cannot trust anyone. But when she sees a little baby crying all on its own, she goes to her and honestly I would have done the same. My heart melted seeing that little girl, who I found out is named Noi. Of course though, Noi is actually a little thieving toddler who often teams up with a band of creatures called Anjis, who are supposedly half monkey and half catfish. They are the ones who steal the stuff when Noi acts as a distraction, and what they take from Raya kind of looks like the dragon gem that we know she is sworn to protect. Maybe since there's more than one glowing blue object being carried, the dragon gem may have broken? That's not particularly clear right now, but we do know that Noi can kick some butt when she needs to. I mean, she even whips out some pocket sand. <laughs> pocket sand. <laughs> As Raya chases down Noi, I honestly was just captivated by the area. All of the glowing lanterns and the river going through the town and the architecture was just beautiful. Honestly, it just makes me want to go experience a place like this or have a Disney resort dedicated to this type of magical world. Probably the closest would be the Polynesian Resort at Walt Disney World though, but regardless, Raya eventually is able to cut through all of Noi's obstacles with ease, even though she was able to avoid and taunt the princess quite a bit until she was stopped. I mean, that little wave just totally killed me. But when Noi was cornered, Raya didn't punish her, but decided to welcome her to the team. We could use someone like you. Yeah? Oh, and did she kind of sound like baby Tarzan for a moment there? Yeah? After being flashed the Disney logo, we see Raya sternly marching with people running around her, which likely connects to a moment we see later on. Then we are told that each of the lands of Kumandra never see eye to eye and have been at war for as long as they can remember, which I can't imagine. But Raya has hope that they will all come together again from an important figure in her life. My daughter, I believe our people can come together again, but someone has to take the first step. Yes, Raya is the one to take the necessary steps to revive her kingdom. And Raya's father, Benja, seems to not only be the person who raised her, but from his outfit, it seems he's also likely the masked man who was seen fighting Raya when she was young. This likely means that he taught Raya how to fight, showed her how to be a guardian of the dragon gem, and mentored her on her path to become a hero. Unfortunately though, by the way Raya put a flower on a statue of him, it seems that by the time Raya has to search for the last dragon, he has already died. Kind of expected, kind of sad, but honestly I was just so shocked that he was introduced and was immediately declared deceased in a matter of seconds. To Who's training peace. her? We must find the oh. last Either way though, Raya knows she must find the last dragon. 
Then we are introduced to a massive man who I learned is a formidable giant named Tong and is voiced by the same actor from Doctor Strange in the MCU named Wong. Was that a coincidence or do you think they did that on purpose? To complete the team of warriors though, we are finally shown a boy who is described as being a street savvy 10 year old entrepreneur bound. I already like how he thinks and we haven't even really heard him speak a complete sentence yet. Really, I'm very pleased with the lineup that Raya will have around her. Hopefully, this warrior team will be as awesome as Groot that have come before, like the Furious Five. All I was thinking about was Poe when I was kind of thinking of this team assembling, but of course, they will definitely have their own identity. They, they won't be skadooshing anyone in this movie. <laughs> After seeing the group traveling across Kumandra and being told this movie is created by the same studio that brought us Moana, we flash back to Raya's father clashing with some people from the Fangland in the place that seemed to have held the Dragon Gem. This makes me think that Raya's father had to attempt to ward off a threat which came from that faction, and that only becomes more confirmed in my mind since that land is where Raya's nemesis comes from. They seem to be a very powerful people based on the description of the trailer and what we see of their kingdom later on, and I mean they ride big cats, so that has to be true. But then, we are finally shown the main antagonist, Namari, who we are told is after the last dragon like Raya, and from what I can tell, she's kind of in a similar position in life to Raya. Not only does she seem to be around Raya's age, but Namari also appears to be the daughter of her people's leader. We can see a younger version of her standing at her mother's side. So Raya and Namari are two warrior women who grew up under prominent individuals in Kumandra. After then being reminded this movie was also created by the same people who brought us Frozen, ironically Raya goes into a shipwrecked boat, kind of like in Frozen 2, only here they are in the middle of the desert that exists within the tail land. Raya then tells us that she has been searching for the last dragon for over six years, which is absolutely wild. This likely means for most of her adult life, she's been on this single mission. But after laying out the necessary pieces for some kind of ritual, including some type of scroll that looks like it holds a lot more images than just the one of a dragon, Raya finally meets Sisu. Please let this be it. In the trailer for Raya and the Last Dragon, Raya is then shown pleading for Sisu to help humanity by having her use the Dragon Gem to ward off the dark threat that is coming their way. And we actually now know what that is, and it's kind of disturbing. The evil force that has invaded Kumandra is called the Droon, but while it's an existential threat to the world, it's not one that can be fought. You see, while the creators say they aren't calling it a virus, I guess the Droon is some kind of entity that can't really be attacked or stopped, and it multiplies, transfers to people, and turns them into stone. And the creators in the IndieWire article I referenced go on to say that the purpose of the story is to show people from different ideologies and opposing worldviews being forced to work together and learn to trust each other. The movie was written an entire year before the pandemic, but somehow they literally made a fantasy adventure about a magical pandemic. Now, while this somewhat stresses me out as someone who was really tightly wound in 2020 because of so much that was going on, I also think it's kind of amazing that this movie will be able to be watched when an event like COVID-19 is going on, and I'm also very grateful that the next generation will have a story that hopefully shows them what has to be done to get through these kinds of hardships. But you'll have to let me know what you think of the evil force of this film being a non-physical entity that is plaguing Raya's world. Now once Raya meets Sisu, we begin to clearly understand that Sisu isn't necessarily as noble of a dragon as Raya may have expected. She's definitely positive, fun, magical, and mythical, but she's also kind of self-deprecating. After being reminded Raya and the Last Dragon is releasing this March, we are shown Namari lining up with a band of warriors outside of some kind of fortress where Raya has been held up. But of course, even though Namari states Sisu is coming with her, Raya definitely rejects that command and then takes out some kind of whip that looks pretty sweet, though that's just the start of the epic conflict between Raya and Namari. After seeing Raya and Tukta cruising away from Fang forces, we see a continuation of Raya marching into the Fang land, which appears to be much more cleanly structured and therefore probably more wealthy and prosperous than the other lands. As the citizens of this ordered place run out of the city though, Raya goes into the heart of the land into what appears to be a throne room, where Namira stands above Raya as our hero removes all of the clothing pieces that could restrict her. And then the two warriors fiercely charge at one another. Once we see the 
the words unite come across the screen in Raya's team, we hear Raya explain her big concern is that the world is broken, and she reiterates that she just can't trust anyone. And that's juxtaposed with her clashing with Namira in the throne room, outside of the fortress, and back when they were children. Maybe they were friends at one point, but definitely their rivalry has built up over a long period of time. The big moment we get to see from Sisu, though, is unleashing her ice upon who I assume are Fang warriors, because she is a water dragon. That happens just before we see that Raya must unite the world, which leads into Sisu providing her thoughts on what actions Raya may need to accomplish that mission. Maybe it's broken because you don't trust anyone. And this is going to be one of the overarching lessons that are going to be taught through this film. So don't expect Namir to be an antagonist for much of the movie. I've just got this feeling that she's going to be someone who is a massive rival for Raya and her team on her journey, but Kumandra will definitely become one again. Raya seems to form a team with people from every land. Raya's from the Heartland, Tong seems to come from the Spineland, Noi from the Talonland, and Bound from the Tailland. So to complete Raya's team so that every land is represented, I think they will eventually get Namira's cooperation and friendship to stop the Droon, which seems to be depicted by dark black and purple clouds, which we first see in Raya's scroll, and later on, looming above her head in the official trailer. Then, we see Sisu flying through the air by freezing water beneath her feet, Benja using the whip we saw Raya use earlier, and another moment of Raya using her blade and harnessing the power of the Dragon Gem, which leads into the title card and us seeing Sisu transform into a human for the first time using a Dragon Gem. Look how close my butt is to my head! And then, we are told Raya and the Last Dragon is coming to theaters and Disney Plus with premiere access on its release date, March 5th which personally I'm totally fine with. When you go to movie theaters with at least two people, from my experience, I can easily pay the $30 that Disney Plus is charging. And in that scenario, you can only see the movie once, you can't pause, and you still don't truly own the movie. So to be honest, as someone who talks about movies online, I really like being able to have access to the entire work immediately when it releases. I find it incredibly convenient, very easy to navigate, and while there are some movies I would probably still go see in theaters, I would honestly rather stay home and have full control over the environment that I'm in, and I think it's the future of movie releases. For me, I'm looking forward to seeing the next fantasy action adventure princess film by Disney in my pajamas. I absolutely believe that this is going to take Walt Disney Animation into some new, bold, and fascinating places, not only through the culture they are depicting, but by the message and the story they are telling. I am excited to get to know Raya and the world of Kumandra. But what did you think of the Raya and the Last Dragons official trailer? Let me know down below, and fun people, make sure to subscribe and click the beautiful bell if you're new, and then click on another magical video in the description or on the screen. Finally, as always, thank you to my patrons and channel members, thanks for watching, and have a magical day.